Hey there, so recently I have gotten a lot of new subscribers and people that kind of find my channel through a lot of my meal prep videos and other things like that. And so sometimes things get lost in the shuffle on who I am and maybe you've been watching for a while and don't really know me. So I thought I would do a little intro video. It's been a while since I've done one of these and you can learn a little bit about me. So I wrote down 20 facts about myself. I decided to go about it in that way. These things are kind of loosely based off of a lot of questions I get in Q and A's and just things that questions I get in comments on videos as well. So we're gonna dive right in. I am married to my husband, Corey. We have been married for almost 11 years. Our 11th anniversary is just around the corner in a couple of weeks. And we have had quite a story to our lives. Those of you that have been subscribed for a long time know it. I'm not gonna go into great detail other than my husband is a recovered addict and we've walked through that in our married life. And so those things have been very hard. A lot of you that have been around for a long time have seen a lot of the emotions and things that went with all of that. But on the other side of it, God has just been so faithful and really brought us through and has completely changed my husband, Corey, into someone totally new and we have our everyday struggles, of course, but it's just very different than dealing with something like addiction. So I am so thankful for him. He is definitely my greatest supporter in what I do, do here on YouTube and being a mom and just is my partner in life. And I'm so glad that he is my partner and that we've been through the fire and back and we have come out stronger and we are best friends now and I just really appreciate him a whole lot. So that brings me to fact number two. I am a mom of three girls. They are super close in age. They're actually each a year apart. A lot of you have seen them grow up as I've been here on YouTube and they are having their birthdays right now. Summertime is their birthday time. And so they are um, seven, eight, and nine, and they are just at really fun ages, and I just so enjoy being their mom. We have a lot of fun. I never thought I would be a girl mom for sure growing up, but it is all about the girly things at these ages, and I feel like I'm creating these little friends. I have my girl squad with me all the time. We love to shop and go to coffee shops and just do cozy, cute, girly things. And that's just so fun. So I've enjoyed every stage of motherhood for sure. The baby years, all of it, I've enjoyed it so much. And I can't wait to watch them grow up and become really strong women that um, just live in a great way and shine their light through the world. So one question I do get sometimes is why I put large family meals on a lot of my videos. And that is because I actually have a pretty good size extended family. A lot of my meals can be doubled and tripled to be made into large family meals. They're very friendly to large families. We um, aren't a massively large family, but in comparison to some areas, some people only have one child. And so um, I feel like my meals and a lot of my preps can lean into a large family prep. So number three is I live in central Pennsylvania and I think there's times certain subject matters in my videos that it might be helpful to know that. So we do get winter times, we do have seasons, full seasons here, and we do have like canning and freezing seasons where certain things are in season to be able to preserve them. And so that plays a part in a lot of when I make what, what I cook, I tend to cook lighter in the summers a lot of time and then more comfort food in the winters when the days seem long and we have lots of snow going on for sure i have grown up here so i am a country girl at heart um i lived in the country slash small town type um world for my entire life we did live in north carolina for a couple of years so if some reason you stumbled upon a video that we lived in north carolina 
and now we don't, that will make a little connection for you if that's how you found my channel. But I just really am so grateful for the area that we've grown up in. We have such a friendly small town feel to our area. And my husband also grew up here as well. We met whenever we were pretty young. We were both 16, I believe, and or 15 and 16. And so we kind of can relate in the sense that we grew up in the same area. I know sometimes that can be a thing with couples that are from total different worlds, but we have a very similar background as well, which I'll get into here in a little bit. So I touched on the fact that I do have an extended family and I am the oldest of four children. I have three brothers under me. All of them are married. I've got lots of nieces and nephews and we really are a close family. We love getting together. We love having um, weekends together and doing things together. I get along very well with my brothers and their wives. And I think that one of those things that attributes to that is we were homeschooled, all of us, the entire way through school. We had lots of friends that were in school. My brothers did things like played football for the high school. So we were very involved in a lot of the community, but being homeschooled just makes you, I don't know, I think it's just the time that you spend together. You just really become very close and I'm so grateful for that. I know that that is a massive blessing that not everyone gets to experience. And so I just love it. I love the fact that I was the only girl. I know growing up a lot of people would ask me, do you wish you had a sister? And I had a really good, actually more than one really good friend that had a lot of sisters. And once I realized that I had privilege of having my own room and not having to share clothes and stuff like that. I was totally okay with having brothers and it just brought a lot of fun in our life. We were very adventurous and did lots of fun things as kids. So as you might be able to guess from me saying that I was homeschooled growing up, we also homeschool. I get lots of questions about that and that also plays into a lot of my meal prepping and why I do so much meal prepping because obviously our children are home, so lunch is eaten here, breakfast is eaten here, and dinner is eaten here, and snacks in between. And I know a lot of moms talk about how during the summer months they go through so much more food because their children are around a lot more whenever school is out, at least here in the US. And so I live that life all year round. <laughs> I've got my kids with me all the time, so making sure that they have all the things, the snacks, everything is um, important, and so being able to home make those things or home cook those things as much as possible, I do try to do. I do get conveniency stuff. You guys see my Costco hauls and things like that, but um, it does play a big part in our life, obviously, and so we also get questions a lot about what curriculum we're using. I've used different curriculum, but last year and this coming year, we are gonna be using The Good and the Beautiful again. We really enjoyed that. It is written by a homeschool mom and or created by a homeschool mom. And so it just has a lot of components that help out homeschool moms. And I really appreciate that a lot. Um, and I know some people, there are some things they don't like about that curriculum. There's always going to be somebody that doesn't like a certain curriculum. So sometimes when I share, I'm just sharing what we're doing and it may not be your cup of tea, but that is what we are using. So fact number six is that I have been on YouTube for seven years. I actually have two channels in case you guys didn't know, this is my main channel. And then I have a second channel that is more aimed around home DIY, home organization, decor, and homemaking. And so I haven't had that channel quite as long. I actually don't quite know how many years I've had that channel. I wanna say three at least. I've had my second channel. Um, but my daughter, who is seven, and this is her birthday time, um, she, I started YouTube when she was six weeks old, so my youngest. And so I've been doing it ever since then, and I love it. It's had its difficult times, especially going through tough seasons in our lives. 
had its tough times of keeping up with it because social media is basically never ending. You can post as much as you want, as often as you want, and it's just one of those things that you're just constantly feeding it. So that can add some stress and I'm still learning how to balance life and doing social media. I think every content creator out there will tell you that it is always a battle of how far to go with your social media, how much to post and all of that. But needless to say, I have enjoyed it. I'm a creative personality. So being able to express my creativity through making videos has been really, really good. And I've just enjoyed the journey for sure. Along with that, I guess I'll pop in here that, that this is my job and I obviously um, make an income from doing this for my family. And then my husband also is self-employed. He has a construction business. Um, he is a contractor and does a little bit of everything. He does specialize in making fences and that's something he really enjoys as well. He loves what he does. So we both really enjoy and love our occupations and we're able to keep family life in the midst of that. My dad was also a contractor growing up and so he was able to work his schedule around events that we wanted to do as a family, trips we wanted to do as a, trip, a family. And so those are some things that we've implemented into our own lives and really enjoy it. Okay, so I did mention that my husband and I have a similar background. So fact number seven is that I have a Mennonite background. Um, my parents left a branch off the Mennonites church whenever I was 11. And so I remember some of those things as a kid. And obviously I have a lot of extended family that is still Mennonite and also a lot of friends that are Mennonite. And then my husband also grew up with a Mennonite background. His parents um, still attend a branch off the Mennonites church. And I say it that way because there is so many different branches of Mennonite. And if you don't even know what Mennonite is, the more common known thing is Amish. Mennonite and Amish are not the same thing, but they have some similarities. So there are, the Amish are much more conservative. A lot of them drive buggies and horses, whereas a lot of the Mennonites, although we have a branch off the Mennonites in our area that is still horse and buggy, um, a lot of them would mainly be recognizable by wearing skirts, dresses, um, and head coverings, the women would wear head coverings. Um, and then again, there's all kinds outside of that. So um, a lot of them are starting to label their churches as like non-denominational, the more liberal Mennonites are, but it's still a form of Mennonite, if that makes sense. <laughs> so with that being said, there's a lot of traditions that I appreciate a lot from my background and ways that we cook, things that we do in our homemaking and stuff that would be very much derived from that background. And so there's a lot that I'm really thankful for. Um, and I still, like I said, have lots of friends and family that are and um, have a lot of appreciation for that community. So sometimes I get questions on what I do besides meal prepping, cooking, YouTube, and <laughs> other things that I show on here. So a couple of my hobbies that I like to do outside of this world of the things that you see me film is I am a reading girly, totally a reading girly. Love it. Um, I would love to have the time to create content around reading and being a book girly, but I don't have the time to do it. So I just enjoy that hobby on its own. Um, this past year I got a Kindle and really, really love that because um, I can take my books with me wherever I go. I do generally like genres that are very like Christian based. Um, I love novels. I love just a lot, any, really any type of Christian based novels I really enjoy. I also like self-help books and I'm just a reader. I love to read, love to cozy up with a drink. And that's another hobby that I really enjoy as well is making like coffee drinks and spritzers and refreshers. I have shown some of that on here, but that is something I do almost on a daily basis is make myself a special drink, whether I'm working 
or relaxing. Um, it's just something I really enjoy and always have. So along with the reading, I kind of feel like it's like a cousin to the reading hobby, is paper crafting and journaling. That has been a love of mine forever. And if you guys have watched some of my um, home organization videos on my second channel, then you know how much I like this because you've seen me organize some of my supplies before, like highlighters. I like, if I can go to an office supply store, I'm like in my zone. It makes me so happy, I enjoy it so much. I've started probably like, I can't even count how many planners I've started and then change my mind and all of that. And you know what? I've just embraced the fact that I enjoy it. And even if I don't finish a planner, I still put stickers in it. I still put cute stuff in it. I still put it together and it was so fun. And so that is something that I also have passed on to my daughters as well. They really enjoy paper crafting as well. Another hobby that I have is I love playing games and it kind of goes hand in hand with like group activities. So. Anything that everybody's going to do, I want to jump on and go to. So <laughs> we're going to go shopping together. If we're going to go play, if we're going to have a game night and play games, if we're going to have a bonfire and have a bunch of people over, I love that. And I have really been striving to set my home up in that manner as well to make space to have people over and just enjoy laughter and friends and family. And I know some of it is probably a little bit of my family background that we enjoy doing those sorts of things. That is also a very Mennonite background thing as well is getting together as family activities and that sort of thing. Number nine, which you probably could have guessed by now, but I wanted to put on my list is that I am a Christian. I am a follower of Jesus and I, don't know where I would be without him. He saved me and I am so thankful for that. And I think that some of that shines through my content at times. And it's obviously the driving force behind my marriage and parenting and all the things around me. And I'm just, I would not be where I'm at with the hardships I've walked through in life without Christ um, being there and without the Holy Spirit guiding me. And so, I'm so thankful to God for everything that he's done for me and I feel incredibly blessed with the life we live now. Okay, so I've gotten this question quite a few times through the years and that is, if I didn't do YouTube, what would I do? So this might come to a shock to some of you because it has nothing to do with the content I create but I would definitely be a birth doula. I love it, I've studied it. Um, whenever I had my first baby, I really did a lot of studying and I think that having a birth doula at your birth can give you such empowerment as a woman and just really help you with your birth. And so that is definitely the other occupation that I would have um, and I don't know, maybe someday when I'm older and I'm not doing YouTube anymore, I have no idea how long I'll do YouTube, but maybe that is a job that I will pursue. Number 11, I just thought I would throw some favorites, fun facts in. My favorite flavor is mint. I will eat mint anything, especially like York mint patties, peppermint mochas in the winter time, mint ice cream, oh my goodness. Uh, always, always the top yum for me. I think I get it from my mom. She <laughs> likes anything mint as well. And so anytime we're out, that's gonna be my number one pick for ice cream. So my husband and I really enjoy traveling. That is something that we've always loved. Road trips, any type of traveling, getting away for a while, going and doing things together that involves traveling to that destination <laughs> is something that we love. So I thought I would throw in here my favorite date slash couples getaway um, that we've had so far in our married life. And last year for our 10 year anniversary, we went to Alex Bay, New York, and it is a gorgeous, like lake, it's part of the 10,000 Islands, I think I have that right, 
Um, it is just beautiful and our anniversary is in September. So we were starting to get some fall vibes going on when we went up. It was gorgeous, but the most fun part of our trip was exploring Bolt Castle. And I hope I have that name right, but it was, it is a castle that they are refurbishing. It was built, I believe in 1900 and there's a lover's story with it. It was, um, built for a man's wife. It just, the whole thing was so cool. We got to take a little boat, go across to the island and you can go through the castle yourself and explore it. And it has even like passageways underneath. It was just so fun. Still one of my absolute favorite memories with my husband. We just had a blast. We stayed at a um, resort up in that area and it was just so much fun. We do love to do things like that, going places and doing things together, spending weekends away is definitely one of our favorite activities. Okay, so I mentioned like probably in almost every video, or at least I have for the last handful of months, that I eat low sugar. And a lot of people have asked me like, what exactly is your eating style or why do I eat that way? So one thing that I struggle with is something called candida. I'm not gonna go into like great, um, details, but basically if I eat a lot of sugar, it makes that act up in my stomach. And so eating a low sugar diet just keeps me happy, keeps my body happy. And I'm able to digest food and not get a tummy ache and things like that. Um, I do have a few other health things that sugar does affect as well, but it, um, that's probably the biggest thing. And so I have eaten more of like a keto diet before, but um, I find that it seems to throw off my hormone balance. It's just not the greatest diet for a woman in my opinion. I know, I know there's gonna be a lot of argument on that and that's okay. I actually ate keto or some form of keto for the last about five years and I would have been on that bandwagon for a long time. Um, however, I started doing more healthy carb cycling, which does not mean eating white bread, okay? That means putting some oatmeal into the situation, putting some sweet potatoes into the situation and I can't even tell you how much better I have felt <laughs> doing that instead of doing strictly keto. I do have days where I eat probably more like keto where it would be lower carb, but then I have days where I incorporate some healthy carbs and I just really love how I've been feeling eating this way. So that answers some questions potentially <laughs> that you have on why I make certain recipes the way I do. We also have a daughter that has a gluten sensitivity and so she does occasionally have gluten, but for the most part, we eat a lot of gluten-free things. So another random little fact about me, and I don't know if this is like my homeschooler shining through, <laughs> but I love history. History is just so interesting to me. I can watch History Channel. And what's funny is my husband, when we first got married, did not care about it at all. And I feel like I've kind of like pulled him over on my side because if we find a good documentary or something like that, we will sit and binge watch it. Um, but something in particular that interests me in history or like fascinates me is people groups. So pe like any people groups that either lived together or had a similar cause, like just intrigues me so much. So just like the history of um, the ancient Egyptians, the history of like even Mormon culture, I have nothing to do with the Mormon church or Mormon culture, but it's just interesting to me of how it came about, those sorts of things. And I will watch lots of videos and things about that. Um, and I don't know again, if it's because of the people group that I would have came out of, like being, having a Mennonite background, just interests me like why people would choose to believe a certain way or what their driving force in congregating and being together is. So anyways, I was trying to think of some good facts and that is one thing that most people don't know about me. So fact number 15 is that I enjoy DIY and redoing furniture and I'm slowly getting back into that on my second channel. 
Um, I really love, it's so, it's so satisfying to see a piece of furniture go from like being damaged or maybe just really old and needing to be refinished and then redoing it yourself. It's just fun to see the before and after and then when you're done, if it's sitting in your house and you don't sell it or something, <laughs> it's just fun to be able to look at that and say, I did that, I made it look that way and it just personalizes your home so much. Number 16 is kind of a new fact for me, but a lot of you know it. This past year, my parents moved to Florida and we have always loved Florida as a family. That's where we vacationed a lot and particularly like the Fort Lauderdale area. And my parents actually moved to the Gulf Coast of Florida and they are working with a boys camp school that's down there and that's what their life entails right now. I actually have a uh, salty on my sweater <laughs> that I'm wearing today because we've been able to visit them very frequently and so it's making our beach trips and being at the ocean also a lot more frequent and just rekindling my love for the ocean that I had when I was younger. And obviously our daughters love being able to go do that. And so you'll see little bits and pieces of content here on my channel and on my second channel of either my parents' house or just being down in Florida and some of the experiences that we have. Number 17 is we do attend a church. Um, I get that question sometimes if we have a church we actually had struggled with that for a while, finding a church that we really liked, but I think that we are, where we're at, we are really enjoying and just having that community aspect is something that, like I said, I love and being able to connect with people. Number 18, another fact about my house, which I don't even know why I pulled two of those out, but I have something called urticaria and it was discovered through doing YouTube, which is so great. Because one time I was doing a Q&A or a fact video or something and I was talking about how when I get cold, I break out in hives and I don't know why. And so many of you guys commented and said, you have urticaria and I'm like, what is that? So I started doing Googling. Essentially, it just means that you are allergic to cold. <laughs> so when I get in cold water, when I get really cold, especially my feet and my hands will get really red and they'll break out and get really itchy. So. Another reason I love visiting Florida in the winter time especially is because I can get away from the cold. And we have considered moving south before. Um, obviously not just for that reason, but that would be one of the reasons I would love to move south again. But right now we're really happy with where we're at and we'll just see what the future holds. Number 19 is I love to sing and dance and I'm terrible at both of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, this is something that sometimes I forget how much I love to dance around and just like start our day that way. But it's something that I've been doing more with our daughters and it's just a fun burst of happiness in the morning. They just get some fun music going and dance and nobody's watching, nobody's judging. <laughs> so you're able to just bust a move and enjoy it and I think is something that makes my daughters giggle a lot and we just love doing it. Number 20 is my favorite meal of the day is breakfast. I will eat breakfast for breakfast, lunch, and dinner or breakfast foods. And I would love if you guys watched this far into the video, if you would comment below either your favorite breakfast or if you don't live in the US or you are from a different culture, what is like a normal breakfast food from your culture? Um, I think breakfast is such an interesting part of the day. A lot of us eat it, some of us don't, but just the whole idea of breakfast foods, like I will go for brunch anytime. I just love it so much. My husband does too, actually. It's something that we enjoy a lot as a family is breakfast foods, if you haven't noticed from my channel. And I always wanna give you guys great inspiration on quick breakfasts that you can pull out and make quickly in the morning. So that is all 20 facts. I hope you got to know me a little bit better today. And especially if you're new here, introduce yourself. Let me know in the comments where you're from and who you are. Um, I love just reading through 
who my subscribers are, who people are that are watching. It's from all over the place. And if you all haven't noticed, I have been posting a whole lot more regularly in the last little while. And that is because I really just want to focus on reconnecting with my viewers here on YouTube. Kind of got a little disconnected there for a while and I'm excited to really get back into it. If this is the first video you're watching of mine, I'm glad you're here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join my channel. I have a lot to share and I am enjoying making content these days. And don't forget to give this video a like and I'll see you guys in my next video.